Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a file hosting slash sharing service hosted in Docker called a non-upload. A non-upload is quick and simple to deploy and has some interesting features that we're going to take a look at. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. Taking a look at the website, we can see that a non-upload claims to be the next level of file sharing and that it's secure, fast, and free. We can also see that their mission is to build the best databaseless file sharing platform. The screenshot in the middle of the page does leave a bit to be desired if I'm being completely honest, but below that, we can take a look at the features of a non-upload. They claim to be secure, simple, extendable, databaseless, fast, and reliable, but let's talk about some of those points just a bit. First, let's talk about security. There are no user accounts, there are no databases, and there are no direct file names. Also, via the environment variables, you can dictate which file types you want to allow on your server. The next feature they claim is simplicity. And while I agree with that to some degree, I did run into some error messages on the front end that were not reflected in the container logs, which made troubleshooting a bit of a chore. Luckily, the errors that I encountered were just permissions and I was able to fix that with a ch mod and a ch own command. Something else that I noticed about uploading files to the site though, is that you can only upload one file at a time. So if you wanna upload multiple files, you'll either need to archive them with a zip or a rar, and then of course, be sure to allow those file types in your environment variables. Also, for some reason, I wasn't able to drag and drop files onto the page to upload files. So I'm guessing there was something on my end, but this is Docker, so that shouldn't have been an issue. Uh, aside from that, I couldn't find anything. So it's probably just a misconfiguration on something on my end. Once the file is uploaded, you'll be given a URL that you can share with whomever you'd like to share your file. They also mentioned that a non-upload is extensible through plugins and that sort of thing, but I didn't find any additional information or documentation about creating plugins. So if you happen to find something, let me know in the comment section down below uh, if you happen to find anything about extending this via plugins or any additional methods. The last point that I want to touch on here is their fast claim. And while that may be the case for some hosting providers, the reality is that if you're self-hosting this, fast will be relative to your hosting environment and internet speeds. Also, there's an option in the Docker Compose that we'll take a look at that allows you to make people wait a specified amount of time before the file actually starts to download, which I'm guessing is meant so that you could maybe throw an ad up there or something like that. But again, I feel like that would be a plugin that I wasn't able to find any information on. Now we've looked at several of these types of file sharing programs. And one thing I will say about this one is that there is actually an admin panel that you can log into. You can do that by going to your URL slash admin and logging in with the username and password that you set in your Docker Compose. But there's also this kind of annoying CAPTCHA thing that's there uh, that often gave me like false positives. Like I would enter it and it would say that's wrong. So I would enter it again and it would say that's wrong. Um, so I just refreshed the page and tried again and it just worked. So that's just something to be aware of that you may encounter. Once we're in the admin area though, you'll find a pretty sparse dashboard with general stats in the middle and a couple of links down the side. As the first link is the dashboard link that we landed on, the next link down is for files. And in the file section, you can see exactly that, the files that have been uploaded to the server. Uh, from here, you can see the file name and you have the option to download or delete the file from right there in the dashboard. Also at the top of the page, you'll find a button that will allow you to export the page as a .xls file. Moving over to the settings tab, you can change the email and password to log into the admin panel. And I suggest changing this as soon as you log in to make it something other than what is in your Docker Compose file. So now that we've taken a moment to kind of go over the non-upload application, let's take a moment to look at the Docker Compose to bring this up. 
Honestly, this is a very straightforward Docker Compose. We have a version 3.3 and a service listed below that of Supernova 3339. Uh, I personally would have named it a non-files or not upload instead of the creator's name, but you can change that if you'd like. Below that, we have a container name of Anon Files, and below that is the port that you'll use to access a non upload either via the local IP or via the reverse proxy of your choice. Next, we have volumes, and that's just where you'll store the files that get uploaded to your application. And the next area is for the environment variables for the setup of the container. And earlier I mentioned changing the username and password when you log into the admin panel, so you can probably just leave the admin email and password as they are in the Docker Compose. The app base URL is, should be the URL that you're going to use to access the uh, Anon upload front end. You'll want to change the app contact email to something relevant, and you can change the app download time to something that you feel is a good fit that also won't upset your users. More information about all of the different environment variables can be found in the docs for non-upload. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail about uh, the other options that are there, uh, but if you're interested in knowing what they do or what they're for, head down to the link in the description where you'll find more information. One other thing that I'll mention, if you wanted to, you could uh, integrate plausible analytics into your non-upload setup if you'd like by just entering the information relevant in those environment variables. And once you're happy with your Docker Compose, you can either deploy it via command line or as I'm showing via portainer. So this will take a couple of minutes to deploy. And while it's deploying, you could take a moment to set up your reverse proxy or your Cloudflare tunnel or whatever method you're going to use to remotely access your non-upload container. And once everything is up and running, you're good to go. It's really just that simple to get a non-upload configured and deployed for a quick file sharing setup on your Docker server. So let me know in the comment section down below if this is something that you would put on your setup or if this is something that you would pass on and let me know why on, on either side of that. If you'd like to help the developer, there's a couple of things you could do. Uh, the first being go over and give this repository a star over on GitHub, that would be super helpful, I'm sure. Also, if you wanted to add feature requests or, or debugging information or any kind of information that the developer can use to, to build on to this project, I'm sure they would love to see that as well. But I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.